So I like to have the arms underneath when I start. So they come out like that. I usually just come and tuck the arms in. You'll have to. I mean, it's for me, it makes it easier. And it's perfect because it's a blanket. I can show you how to drape the blanket too. The blankets, you just drape the blanket back like you would a sheet, but you can go a little further. You can go just down right there. third one, the third massage stroke is friction. Friction is a very important one and that's the one you will use a lot. That's one we'll really learn a lot of when we do trigger point therapy. The friction is right here, we're going back and forth. You do friction on knots, trigger points. Are you using your elbow? No, I'm using my fingertips. Oh, okay. And you can go when you first start, you just warm up the body. You can go light, a nice little move you can do. Just start right up through here, because again, rectus spinae group runs all the way down. Just get your fingertips right. So right here is the spine. Let's come off the spine. Feels so good. And you can just do, yeah, it's a nice one. And just do a little bit of friction all the way down. See, nice little uh -huh. blood flow opening up. There, start right there. And also, as I do it, you see, as you, it's a little gentle rock as well. I almost started giggling when that happened because it made me think of me and the Vita last week. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we were doing, you know, the opening stroke a lot, coming down here. So also practice doing, you know, one at a time here. And here. And then working on really getting in the rib cage. And then from here, you can transition from here, nice and slow. See this hand goes this way, this hand ends up here, and you go side to side. The good stuff we classified as a Swedish? Yeah, this is, right now we're, we're learning we're just, just basic Swedish, Swedish techniques, okay. yes. To really do a true deep tissue, you start with Swedish, and you work, okay. your, way, and you work your way deep. The Swedish will get them nice and relaxed. It'll get the body warmed up and the muscles prepared for deeper tissue. And then when we do some deep tissue work, we go back to Swedish to relax. Because when you get a real intense deep tissue and then it starts getting a little painful, you want to lay off of that and go back to Swedish, get them relaxed. Because if you keep going too deep, they're going to be real tense. Then you start digging in there and it's just going to hurt and it's going to make them feel way worse. using our knuckles tonight too. So we come back. Alright, so right here. So we're starting with the knuckles. Here, same way you start. Sink sink in. You can see all the blood flow comes up from using the knuckles. It's really nice. So we'll do that farage, the opening stroke, a couple times. We'll work on the knuckles a little bit. Make sure you add a lot of neck in. So, all right, so let's start now to show just a couple things we want to add in. Let me show you a big 
thing you want to do in your massage, and that is having a good flow and transitioning every time we go from one spot to the other. All right, so say I did a couple opening strokes. Now I'm gonna get into a little bit of my routine. Come down. Work my way. I like, so in a 50 minute massage, you typically have about 20 minutes to work on the back. So I like to do 10 minutes on each side. So I come here, work back a little bit, and go the back length. And then I would use my elbow, so we're not yet. We're just working on hands and knuckles tonight. So here. Do this a few times, my elbows a few times. Back to the neck a little bit. To the trap. And here's a nice transition to go to the arm. So I'm here, and I want to work to the arm. I come. Swoop underneath and pull it out. And that opens me up for a stretch, and I can just stretch the arm. So let's do some light basic stretching. So remember when you grab, you're not when you grab the arm for the stretch, don't just grab it, pull it. <laughs> Real light. So think of a rubber band. You have a rubber band, you pull the rubber band this way, and you slowly bring the rubber band back. Don't pull the rubber band and let it snap. Pull the rubber band and let it come back nice and slow. Just like the joint and the ligaments in there. So a nice stretch and then a nice release. I wouldn't just grab her arm, pull it, and let go. So stretch and slowly release and bring it back. I can stretch down this way. And if someone's complaining of neck pain or upper trap pain, grab right where the elbow is, a little bit of a stretch. And you can work that area just like that. Oh, I bet that feels so good. <laughs> How's that feeling? Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Down, transition back onto the arm and I'm gonna apply some motion see it? contact and then come back up apply some motion that way this is me getting all the lotion on the arm not breaking any contact that way and I can just go right And you guys will notice your forearms will get be getting really sore from doing this work in the beginning. So take care of each other's arms, forearms. Is Lighten. your hand in a fist right now? Yes. So I come up right then, about right here. Start lightening your pressure over the elbow, and go about deep, about right there back into the triceps and back and here you can get just a little bit of the hands I do most of my hand routine when they're face up see it look one reason I like to keep my hand like this is because of the flexors. The hand, the fingers will come up like this. So this helps keep it that muscle long so that I can really get in there and work it. So even make a better habit, the palm right there like that. You, never know, you might get the occasional Weirdo tries to hold your hand, so yeah, see, they might do that. <laughs> so I, I just keep it like that, and I feel them trying to like grab my hand, I just move it away. But sometimes when you do that, you'll feel the fingers do this, and they're not probably not trying to hold your hand, it's just that action. Because watch, 
See how the fingers already naturally curl? So I like to keep it like that. Do you like folding hands? <laughs> <laughs> Not unwantedly. <laughs> There's so much I'll we'll go back over, but you can get here, walk up like this. From here, you can transition, grab the trap, come like that, and stretch, pull. And once that opens up, <laughs> exactly. That good. Range of motion. Wow. And that even opened up a little bit more, and that's great. So I wanted. So from here, nice stretch. Pull the arm back. That really oh, opens up that scalp. Oh, Look at that. Get in there, hurts. So I feel like you are not a fan of the scalp. Did I'm not. <laughs> not on my right side. No. So I can even bring this like like that, and then just work my hand there a little more. Typically, I like to use my elbows because I don't like to burn out my hands. But for now, I'm just showing you guys how you can work. The hand. I'm a sissy, so like go ahead and use, use your hands. I feel okay. like the elbows just gonna send me. You should be able to use your elbows on anyone at a light pressure. I'll show you guys another way because a lot of a lot of people have this area it's very tight and it's hard to get in there mm -hmm. and this technique really helps get in there better mm -hmm. so if this area neck was bothering her she has some pain right here in her back this is where I would go and work right through there you'll feel all the tension all the knots right mm -hmm. through there so this is also another move I come over So right here on the spine, light off the spine. Just a nice move and glide in there. That'll open that up even way more. See how much I can get in there? So also remember when you do this technique, that keeping the arm behind the back like this after a while, it starts getting uncomfortable, especially on the anterior delt. So once you're in there, take that arm down and already opens you up. So inferior angle of the scapula is right here. Superior angle is up here. Sorry. And just grab and a slight little twist. Get that opened up and moving. And also remember anytime you do any good deep work on the trap, you come up and work on the neck because like when this gets squeezed and pinched a lot of times it'll shoot some pain up the neck so make sure you always come back to the neck and work that out and see all the blood flow we're getting right there now it's great I just take a look at the difference in color on this on each side all that opened up it's so great that will show way more mobility so anybody who has any kind of pain there, that's this little stuff you do. All right, so I showed just some friction down the back. There's also circular friction. This is one of the few times you can actually touch the spine and it's okay but it's real light. So on the top right here, the very top of the spine, each one has it, they're called spinous processes. You can even see it on the skeleton. Just for reference, these guys here. So those are spinous processes. C7 sticks out the most. So it's right there. You can really feel that one. So you can start, so cervical vertebra vertebrae go one to seven. You can start up there on one and just do circular friction real light all the way down the spine and 
And there's little muscles in between here called rotators, and they help the body do this. So anybody ever has this kind of problem, there's a little move you can add in. <coughs> Just nice circular friction all the way down the back. And see, I'm also just doing a slight rock. That's a little move you can add in in the beginning of your massage with, with the friction. Right. So do what feels most comfortable for you. I see a lot of therapists like to stand like this. Over the years, I found it better for me to lean against the table. So if my legs are leaning against the table like this, it takes all the pressure off my lower back. So if you feel like in your massage, anytime you feel any pain or tension in your lower back, get one of your legs and lean it against the table. You'll see how much pressure it'll take off your back. Because if you do seven, eight massages and you just keep fighting through the pain, you're gonna burn out very quick. And you may not even be at work the next, mm -hmm. you, know, you may not be at work the next day. So you can work on both hands coming up this way. So let me emphasize what I'm doing. So remember, like when I'm here, I'm putting my weights on my front leg, my back leg here, and it's, I'm doing this. I'm coming off this leg like this. All my power, all my pressure is always in my legs, not the shoulders. It's in my legs. That's where I'm pushing from. So how far I can bring my leg back and push. And when you have your table set, Always try to set it a little lower than higher. See this table for me, you can tell it's lower, but all I have to do is just spread my legs like this a little more. It's, w it's way better than being up like this on my tippy toes trying to do a massage. I'd much, much rather be like this. I can adjust my body mechanics way better if the table's lower. So I'll show you just a quick little demo on what this side would look like. So another thing, if you're having problems using your fist, use your other hand, put this hand underneath like this, and have this hand push. Have the, let my left hand's gonna sink in, my left hand, my right hand's gonna push the knuckles up. And also try to make a habit of having your wrist this way instead of this way. This way has way more force, way more power. This way can break easy. And over time, if you get a habit of being like this and pressing, you're going to do a lot of damage to your carpal tunnel nerve. So this way is, is way, way better on your wrist and carpal tunnel nerve.
ever do any kind of stretch and you feel the body resist, like resist, lightly let go. Have them take a, so go ahead and take a nice big deep breath. Exhale, and as they exhale, then stretch. And see how much more I was able to get. And slightly come back, take another nice big deep breath, and exhale. Get the scapula nice and stretched like this. Again, I don't just let go of it. Nice and slow. And back. And work that out. this way and put it back down come up this way as well. So the triceps extend the elbow. So now in the biceps, flex the elbow. So now I'm going into flexion and I'm going slow extension as I come up to really get into the triceps. And see the slight flexion and extension movements right here you can do. So I did one side, did the other, come back, I would drape the arm again, over. Actually, I'll show you what you can do as well. It's right here. So typically what I like to do is I do a couple minutes on this side, a couple minutes on the arm, flip this side, this side, then I like to end the arms out like this. And a couple more nice relaxing strokes down. Now that both arms have already been worked on, I can come down both arms. I can do that a few times if I like, just depending on how much time I have. And then I'll come over and drape the arms. This way. Can someone tell me what these were called? Nerve, or strokes? sorry, yeah, nerve strokes. Nerve strokes. Good job, guys. And sometimes if it's a little warm, so if I said I did a real deep tissue and the person was getting a little hot, mm -hmm. just come over there and back. Uh, that's 
get into the